हेलो एंड वेलकम टू बायोलॉजी क्लास वी आर स्टडिंग टॉपिक किंगडम एनिमेलिया एंड इन दिस टॉपिक वी आर स्टडिंग क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एनिमल्स एंड सो मेनी डेज वी आर स्टडिंग दिस टॉपिक एंड सो फार वी रीच टू द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द टॉपिक इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल स्टडी लास्ट क्लास ऑफ किंगडम एनिमेलिया दैट इज क्लास मेमेलिया when we consider this class mammalia class mammalia include most advanced animals in the animal kingdom so let us begin study the most advanced class in the kingdom animalia that is class mammalia so let us first consider few examples of class mammalia and try let us try to understand their characteristics now the first and very familiar example of mammals is nothing but human being all of us humans uh, fall under mammalia that is we all are mammals then another example of mammals is this picture is of dolphin there are many mammals who are living in the water aquatic uh, aquatic mammal so dolphin this is a picture of dolphin and dolphin is an example of aquatic mammal other aquatic mammals like well the largest animal on earth this well is also an aquatic mammal most advanced animal now next next uh, example is walrus uh, is also an uh, is also an mammal so there are several aquatic mammals exist okay then another example of mammal is of flying mammal this is an picture of bat bat is an example of flying mammal okay then another example uh, our neighbor example it is nothing but monkey now all these animals are falling under mammalia other animals which fall under mammalia are cow dog then uh, tiger lion then many other animals uh, even rat all uh, all of them are coming under class mammalia now uh, as i told you these are the most advanced animals we will study their characteristic they are show, they show the most advanced characteristics of, among the animal kingdom but before shifting to the advanced characteristics few things we need to know about mammals now remember one thing mammalia is the fourth class of tetrapoda correct super class tetrapoda is divided into four classes and among them last class is mammalia now this classification of tetrapoda is based on based on what what is the basis of classification of tetrapoda into amphibian reptiles aves and mammals it is a type of exoskeleton what type of skin it possesses correct so when we consider these mammals okay the basis of classification are uh, like what which animals are included in mammals are the one who are having hairy exoskeleton on their body they are having hair so for example if you see this monkey monkey whole body is covered by hair okay this bat body is covered by hair even human being are having hair okay so presence of hair or even it is called as fur is the characteristic of mammal it is the basis of classification of animals into mammals got it clear now when we consider about their habitat mammals are con considered again as a omnipresent we find them in all kind of habitat like they we will we can find them on the mountains we can find them in the ocean in or uh, uh, in fresh water in the air like bat okay so everywhere mammals are present that's why they are called as omnipresent so two characteristics i just explain you one is presence of hair is the basis of classification and secondly they are omnipresent habitat wise they exist everywhere understanding so this is uh, these are the two basic characteristics of mammal now when we go in the detail characteristic see one by one characteristic we will uh, go and study ahead but few important characteristics which make the mammals different than any other animals are like uh, it is like giving birth to the baby okay what is the special characteristic of mammals mammals most of the mammals there are few exceptions but generally mammals give birth to the baby okay human being give birth to the baby lion give birth to the baby even bats give birth to the baby dolphins give birth to the baby so this giving birth to the baby is very very special characteristic of 
uh, mammals which is called as viviparity but when we consider uh, this characteristic one more advanced characteristic is present in mammals and which may this characteristic make mammals different than any other any other animals so that is its parental care now parental care means mom or uh, male and female parents take care of their child okay like you are parents taking care of you that is parental care now you are more than 15 years age still for that 15 years and few years more your parents are going to take care of you so that is parental care yeah another animal who another mammal who show high level of parental care is elephant elephant also take uh, care of their bab babies for long duration likewise so this taking care of baby is called as parental care and which is very very important characteristic of mammals so uh, now there are three different type of uh, mammals on uh, like on the basis of how they take care of their babies or how they give birth to the child so let us uh, take a glance on that and then we will shift to individual characteristics of mammals okay now this is a uh, one mammal called as duck bill platypus what its name duck bill platypus see if you see its mouth it is like a duck bill okay okay that's why it is called as duck bill platypus and this is a mammal which is found only in australia australian continent basically and this uh, this is aquatic mammals uh, living in water even it can walk on the shore of the river but generally it's staying in the river so this this duck bill platypus is found in australian continent and its speciality is that it is a egg laying mammal what it is egg laying mammals it do not give birth to the young ones it instead of that it build nest and in that nest it uh, it uh, it lay eggs in that nest now when we consider this kind of mammals they are mammals because they are having hair on their skin but still they are egg laying okay and uh, it is duck bill platypus is basically included in the a uh, prototherian mammal we will study details of it after some time uh, so here uh, like one more thing here we cannot see much parental care it is laying eggs and here uh, like you know uh, young ones are hatching from the eggs okay so uh, much parental care is not seen the another example another type of mammal are, are these uh, example is kangaroo and called as marsupial mammals what does they are called as marsupial mammals now marsupial mammals are provided with this sack like structure on their abdomen what does they are having a sack like structure on their abdomen and a very small baby very very small baby take birth okay and then that baby uh, find its way into the pouch okay into this pouch which is present on the abdomen into this sac which is present in the abdomen inside the sac there is a opening of mammary gland there is there are nipples and through which baby remain attached to those nipples and continuously it will suck milk and till it grow of this size okay when it grow when it can come out and uh, start eating its food Uh, it become independent still for protection it is still dependent on its mother so this baby can come out eat grass and still if it, if it feel unprotected outside if some one try to attack on this kangaroo baby it will again jump into the pouch okay so this presence of this pouch on the abdomen for the protection as well as feeding of the baby it is Uh, a peculiar characteristic of this marsupial mammals okay understanding so this is a level of a level of parental care mammal show now another uh, good example of parental care is of elephant okay now this is a picture of african elephant along with its baby so basically elephants take a uh, female elephant take a lot of care of their baby and basically they teach everything uh to their baby right from uh, eating right from protection right from swimming 
everything is taught by mother to the baby even uh, even this baby elephant for long duration it depend on the mother's mother's milk for its food understanding so basically uh, elephant give birth to the child okay and then that child is provided with a milk and a child is feeding on the milk for long duration so these kind of mammals are called as placental mammal placental mammals now pregnancy period of elephant is considered as the highest pregnancy period and it is for 24 months 2 years the baby birth in the elephant takes takes after like take around 24 months means 2 years it take okay so these are the three different type of mammals egg laying mammals marsupial mammals and placental mammals understanding so uh, with this knowledge let us go ahead and learn one by one characteristics of mammals so the first characteristic of mammal is about its skeleton now two types of skeletons are there one is endoskeleton and outer is the exoskeleton endoskeleton obviously bony endoskeleton obviously bony endoskeleton and uh basically vertebral column is very well developed the first vertebra which support head is called as atlas atlas is present head is properly supported then axis and sacrum these vertebrae allow movement of neck so axis is also present sacrum is also present so neck is easily movable okay neck movement are very easy as compared to any other group of animals okay so there are total seven vertebrae in the neck and neck vertebrae are called as cervical vertebrae remember this okay now hairy exoskeleton this is the main characteristics of mammal i just told you okay along with hair the digits also show nails claws horns this type of exoskeletons are also there horns are present in cow okay <laughs> not in all the mammals now next uh, characteristic about its limbs see we are all uh, mammals also come under tetrapoda so tetrapoda means four limbs four limbs and hind limbs so many times we discussed about it and here also uh, limbs are pentadactyl limbs pentadactyl limbs means five digits limbs with five digits okay and limbs are modified for uh, the mammals who are land living on land for them walking like us uh, who are living on tree climbing like monkey and they uh, in them it is modified as for climbing like monkey and aquatic mammal it is modified for swimming now next characteristic is about its skin skin is with hair as well as skin is glandular means glands are present on the skin now two types of glands are found in the mammals one is called as sebaceous gland sebaceous gland is oil producing gland okay see uh, this is a gland which is responsible for keeping our skin little oily otherwise in winter it will break off okay the skin will break up that's why the oil gland keep our skin moist then another gland is present which is called as sweat gland sweat gland is also called as sudoriferous gland remember everything every time alternative name is you must remember this alternative name for glands or for bones everything or even for animals because when uh, the question is asked in your entrance examinations they can use any name whether sweat gland or sudoriferous gland okay so sudoriferous gland is the gland which uh, which give out sweat and sweat is the the main function of sweating is to maintain our body temperature during uh, high heat understanding so two types of gland sebaceous gland and sweat gland or a sudoriferous gland the next characteristic is about very important characteristic and it is about its coelom now do you remember what do you mean by coelom what is coelom coelom is a body cavity now usually body cavity is present only during embryonic condition and afterward it is filled with organs okay but 
in mammal whatever body cavity we are having it is divided into two parts one part it is our chest region and another part is our uh, stomach region now the chest region the cavity is called as the thoracic cavity our heart is located in thoracic cavity our lungs are located in thoracic cavity okay and another cavity is our abdominal cavity which is nothing but our stomach part abdomen part where our digestive system is located our uh, kidneys are located our like other organs are located understanding so these two cavities are present in the mammals and in between these two cavities there is a flap so thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity are separated by presence of a curtain like structure and that curtain like structure is called as diaphragm okay and this diaphragm even help in the respiration okay in the respiration topic we are going to study how exactly diaphragm help in the uh, help in the respiration but right now you just need to remember this thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity are separated from one another by having a partition a curtain like partition in between them which is called as diaphragm okay now uh, then when we come to the thoracic cavity that is our chest cavity uh, it is also again divided further one part is covering heart heart is exactly at the center of our thoracic cavity and heart is covered by Uh, by one ca uh, one cavity it is called as pericardial cavity okay so heart is located into the pericardial cavity and rest two cavities which are called as pleural cavities they are covering uh, covering lungs okay so remember coelom in the mammals is divided into two parts thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity separated by diaphragm and thoracic cavity again divided into parts two parts of it covering lungs called as pleural cavity and one part covering the heart called as pericardial cavity understanding so all these things all the cavities you need to write when you write about coelom of the mammals clear about it now let us shift to the digestive system now digestive system uh, is always opening with mouth and ending with anus in case of mammals but uh, the mouth is covered by lips okay the covering of uh, covering of mouth is not exactly jaw jaw are having some extra functions in mammals but mainly mouth cavity is covered by lips understanding uh, so opening of the mouth is lips lips are present only in the mammals no other animal show the presence of lips okay now uh, next when we talk about the teeth of the mammal it is very important now few important terms you need to remember in the teeth of the mammal try to understand those terms and try to remember them see one term it is called as teeth in the mammal are called as heterodont what does they are called as heterodont now try to understand meaning of heterodont heterodont means different type of teeth are present now <laughs> when we see dog dog are having large teeth on its side which are called as canines okay so canines are there molars are there premolars are there so all teeth are not same ours also all teeth are not same teeth are having different shape and different sizes okay so different type of teeth are present in the mammals that's why they are called as heterodont okay then another term used for the teeth of the uh, teeth of the mammal it is they are thecodont what does they are thecodont thecodont means our teeth are embedded in our jaw bones okay they are not just superficially placed they are their roots are into into our jaw bones okay uh, so they are fit into jaw bones that that's why they are called as thecodont remember the term and its meaning why heterodont why thecodont another term used for the mammalian teeth is that they are diaphragodont now diaphragodont means we get teeth two times when we are kids we are having milk milk teeth after when when we reach to the 10 12 or 13 years age that time our milk teeth fall off and permanent teeth come so that uh, that time means 
teeth come twice in the life span of a human being that's why they are called as diphyodont okay in uh, in case of shark this they are polyphyodont means many a times they can uh, you know once the teeth is uh, teeth are you know uh, not uh, working properly they can come again and whole uh, like lifetime shark can get new teeth but humans cannot get all other mammals cannot get it they get only twice in the lifetime understanding so remember the term heterodont thecodont and diphyodont clear about it let us go to the next characteristic so next characteristic is about its circulatory system easy to remember four chambered heart two auricles two ventricles just like birds okay uh, now another thing is rbcs very very peculiarly you need to remember about rbcs of the mammals rbcs of the mammal are always biconcave okay always biconcave and they are denucleated means rbcs don't have any nucleus okay rbcs are without nucleus there are two exceptions in this one exception is camel in case of camel rbcs are nucleated and another animal just like camel which is called as llama llama is uh, you know uh, it is also a domestic animal uh, in many countries and it is uh, it look exactly like you know look somewhat like uh, camel and both uh, here you need to remember is that in camels at well as well as in llama they are having nucleus in their rbcs all other mammals like dog human being rbcs are denucleated exception are only two camel and llama and they are uh, double circulation is also observed in the mammals clear about the circulatory system we'll go ahead next characteristic is about its nervous system when we consider nervous system of uh, mammals there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves 12 pairs of cranial nerves i wrote only 12 cranial nerve actually 12 pairs of cranial nerves and the main important characteristic in the mammalian brain is that they show uh, chondrogenia actually optic chondrogenia uh, any in, in general they show presence of chondrogenia i'll tell you what is chondrogenia so presence of chondrogenia and presence of another thing called as corpus callosum see these two things are the peculiarity in the mammalian brain now first try to understand what is corpus callosum now when i consider human or any animal it is having brain is having two parts okay one part is left part and another part is right part and uh, they control one one side okay generally left uh, left part of the brain control right side of the body and right part Uh, right brain control left side of our body but that is not a point of uh, interest over here main thing is that two brains control two sides of the body and suppose my left hand is controlled by my right brain okay then what my left hand is doing that my uh, another brain will not understand okay so there won't be any coordination between two hands my right hand my right hand should understand what my left hand is doing agree my right hand should understand what my left hand is doing so there should be coordination between the two brains and this corpus callosum is present in between two brains here it is present in between two brains okay so and it connect two brains so what one brain is doing one side of the brain is doing another side will understand so my left side what it is doing my right side understand because of presence of corpus callosum now you will ask me whether other other animals this is not happen in frog uh, what right side is doing left side don't understand actually that left side and right side coordination in the frog in the lizards is very weak but in case of mammals it is very strong because of presence of corpus callosum getting my point then optic uh, or uh, in general chondrogenia help us to move our neck where sound come suppose now i am teaching you there some sound came outside or some bright light appeared outside all of you lo will look there agree all of you will see there why 
बिकॉज युअर ब्रेन इज हॅव्हिंग ऑप्टिक कॉन्ट्रीजमिन सो इट इज द इट इज द पार्ट ऑफ द ब्रेन विच मेक विच विल मेक युअर हेड मूव्ह इन द डिरेक्शन ऑफ लाईट ऑर इन द डिरेक्शन ऑफ साऊंड अंडरस्टँडिंग इट इज क्वाईट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड जस्ट राईट नाव यू नीड यू ट्राय टू रिमेंबर मॅमेलियन ब्रेन इज हॅव्हिंग ट्वेल्व पेअर्स ऑफ क्रॅनियल नर्व्स अँड इट इज हॅव्हिंग ऑप्टिक कॉन्ट्रीजमिना अँड कॉर्पस कोलॉसम अँड इफ यू इफ यू कॅन ट्राय टू रिमेंबर द फंक्शन कॉर्पस कोलॉसम कोऑर्डिनेट बिटवीन द टू साईड्स ऑफ द ब्रेन अँड ऑप्टिक कॉन्ट्रीजमिना मेक अवर हेड मूव्ह towards the light or towards the sound understanding let us go to the next characteristic that is sense organs now when we consider sense organ ears are very well developed in the mammals uh, ears are having three parts external ear middle ear and internal ear external ear is characterized by ear pinna whatever external structure we are having it is ear pinna they are present only in the mammals it is very specific characteristic of mammals okay in any other animal you will not find this ear pinna and whenever in the animal you see this obviously it will be mammal remember and then middle ear is having some small small bones okay in the in the ear they are called as ear ossicles and we are having total three ear ossicles the names names are stape incus and malus now stape is the smallest bone of our body what is it smallest bone of our body okay smallest bone of human body then uh, we are having a very strong hearing organ inside our internal ear which is called as organ of cordy and cochlea is the tract through which sound go our nerves means our nasal openings basically opening to our pharynx okay uh, pharynx means a part in the our neck region okay then we are having movable eyelids so we can sleep we can open our you know open close and open our eyes basically then the next one is our excretory system all the mammals are ureotelic unexceptionally means urea as a excretory product and we are having pair of kidneys and kidneys are always bean shaped okay now next characteristic is our respiratory system we are having very strong pulmonary respiration hopefully you know now what is pulmonary respiration what is it respiration by lungs and as usual as i told you diaphragm help in the pulmonary respiration okay it uh, increases efficiency of our lungs then we are homeothermic animals our body temperature we can maintain it it is irrespective of uh, irrespective of environmental temperature but mammals cannot maintain our body temperature as high as birds our body temperature is little less than birds but uh, our metabolic rate is very very high okay that's why we need continuous food okay three or four times in a day all mammals almost all the mammals need food then uh, next characteristic this characteristic we just discussed they are omnipresent okay now next one is about its reproduction very important uh, thing in the mammals now all the mammals are unisexual male and female total separation they generally show sexual dimorphism for example in human okay we can recognize uh, female and we can recognize male just by seeing them okay dogs we can recognize male and female dogs so basically most of the mammals show, show sexual dimorphism now in case of males primary sex organs are testes and testes produce sperm okay and but testes are not located inside our body inside the mammal's body basically they are located outside in a sac like structure called as scrotal sac okay uh, details of reproduction we will study in the topic reproduction afterward then uh, females are provided with the ovaries a pair of ovaries and ovaries produce egg now egg in the egg in the mammals is all acetal means there is no yolk okay because we are going to our females are go, going to grow child giving nourishment to the child through placenta so there is no need of yolk yolk is basically 
food for the growing baby okay and food is not required because mother is going to provide food understand it then uh, they are even in some cases they are micro lecithal means little amount of yolk is there uh, not much uh, or not uh, it is not like that yolk is totally absent in some cases micro lecithal in some cases a lecithal then fertilization is always internal takes place inside the female body female is generally viviparous except in the duck bill platypus which is prototherian mammal uh, egg laying mammal and then next one is as i told you they show very high degree of parental care mammary gland is there to feed the newborn baby and basically mammals take care of their babies for long duration now next one about there is three types of uh, mammals on the basis of development of young one some are prototherian egg laying mammals for example duck bill platypus and another are marsupials like kangaroo they are having pouch and uh, development of immature young one takes place inside the pouch and there are placental mammals which give birth to the completely developed young one like human being or like elephant like dog all are, all of us are all of us are placental mammals clear about it this is all about the mammals so mammals are the most advanced animals among all the anim among whole animal kingdom and you need to remember about all the characteristic now if uh, if you are having difficulty in understanding any of the characteristic listen this video again i uh, i went quite faster because like lot of characteristics we need to explain and already we have studied most of the characteristics but still try to understand it it is a very interesting and last class of kingdom animalia now uh, this this king mammalia is the end of animal classification but in your textbook there are two more points are given one point is called as zoological parks and zoological museum this is a small part and just add in in your uh, in your kingdom animalia topic so in this video let us just uh, take a glance on what exactly is the zoological park and what exactly is the zoological museum and in your book a list of zoological park and a list of zoological museum is given in india where which museum is located where now here there is no point in teaching that you need to by heart it there is no option which museum or which park is present in which area of the of india and what is its speciality you need to remember it i'll try to give this in in notes you just uh, go uh, go through it you will understand it there is uh, nothing to teach in that but as a part i'm just considering definitions in this video so first about zoological park now zoological park is the place where we go and see animals basically <laughs> okay so here uh, here in the zoological park the animals are kept in captivity in cages and there they are uh, they are means we can go and see them okay so this is the way by which we can see many wild animals now in the zoo in the zoological park basically the animals are taken care uh, taken care even many a time many animals breeding takes place in the in the zoological park in the zoos and uh, then it is a good uh, good place for the breeding of the animal and taking care of them okay but animals are kept in captivity in the cages so zoological museum is another place zoological museum it is the place where live animals are not kept the all animals are in the specimen form whether they are in the bottle or their skeleton is preserved or you know something like that so zoological museum is the place which is there to give information about animals okay so in many zoological museums in new york and all we can even see the skeleton of dinosaurs you know extinct animals fossils many things we can see only in the zoological museum so there are few zoological museums in india not much but there are few and there are several zoological parks in india so just go through the list of them and see what you are understanding and what you could remember at your most understanding so this is all about the topic uh, longest topic of your syllabus that is kingdom animalia
so this is all about kingdom animalia topic this topic is all about uh, you know memorization you need to remember the characteristics of animals the different uh, like you know different terms different uh, what which characteristics are present in what kind of animal which are which is the primitive characteristic which is the advanced characteristic everything you need to remember okay uh, so this is uh, this is the end of very interesting topic and the longest topic of your syllabus so next video see you with the new topic till then goodbye take care